Hey gang, it's Paul with Sudback. Welcome back to our channel. Joe and I are back here at one of our main projects, and on our last video at this project, you saw us hang all the drywall, and it came out phenomenal. We are ready for the next step, and that is taping and mudding. And that seems to give people a lot of struggle sometimes. So in this video, we're gonna pass on to you some of our tips and tricks that we've picked up along the way so that you can get a flawless finish too. Let's get started. All right, so let's come on down here to the floor and let's show you our materials and equipment. And you don't need that much, so check it out. I have two different types of compound. I have a setting type and I have a pre-mix type. We're gonna show you what that's all about here in just a minute. And I just use three knives, gang. You can see how well used they are. A six inch one that's all stainless steel and an eight and a 12. I've got a stainless steel pan here. You can buy the plastic ones, but just spend a few more dollars, get the stainless steel. You won't regret it. We're using paper tape. We're gonna talk about the tape here in a minute. And I've got a dispenser. I like using that, frees up my hands. I've got a utility knife and a screwdriver. So let's head back to these two types of compound and talk about why we need both types. On a remodel project, especially if you hung the drywall yourselves, you're gonna have some gaps between sheets, particularly between the old and the new maybe. You're gonna have some damaged areas, some holes you gotta fix. And you're gonna fix those with what's called a setting type of compound. It's a powder in a bag and you mix it with water. It's called a setting type because once you mix it with water, it's gonna start to set up. You can't stop it. It's like grout, concrete, thin set, that type of product. And it's great for repairing drywall because it cures extremely fast and it doesn't shrink very much. If I tried to use an all-purpose or this type of premix compound to make those repairs, you got two problems. It's gonna take forever to dry and you're gonna get a lot of shrinkage. Those two problems are gone when you use a setting type of compound. Now this number right here on the bag, that tells you about how long you have to work with the product when you mix it according to the manufacturer's directions. As a contrast, that's five minute mud. You gotta be on the go to get this stuff on the wall quick enough. But we're using 45 minute because that's all they had at the store and it's gonna be great for us because we're gonna start here in the kitchen with our pre-fill. That's what we call this step. We're gonna work our way to the back of the house and by the time we're done, our pre-fill in the kitchen is gonna be cured, it's gonna be hardened and we can start taping and mudding right away the same day. And what we're gonna use to tape and mud is our USG Plus 3. Now they had this at my home center and they also had the all-purpose mud in a box. I chose this for a few reasons. Number one, it is very light. I can pick this up with one hand. If that were a bucket full of paint, I'd have to do this, right? And I like the lightweight stuff. It makes a big difference when this is full of mud and at the end of the day, my shoulders and my arms aren't so tired. The other reason is it's pre-mixed. Whatever I mix on this stuff, I gotta use it and I'm gonna waste a lot of it. But on this, I can save it and I'm not wasting material. And the third reason is, now I got free buckets basically, right? We got a lot of tile work to do in this house and now I got four buckets I can use to do all our tile work. So let's mix up some setting type of compound and start pre-filling. Now all I do gang, I pour the powder right in my pan and I mix it up with that knife. I've got some water right here. Now, if you've really botched your drywall job, you may have to mix that up like a bag at a time to make all your repairs, but check it out. Not too bad here. I think right here is a good place to start. Now, I may have to mix up two or three batches, but it mixes very easily. So let's bust open that bag, mix up some setting type of compound, start pre-filling. That's all I gotta do to fill in that gap. Now when I say gap, what I do, anything bigger than an eighth of an inch, I'm gonna pre-fill. And when I mentioned before about repairs, check this out. Got a little damaged area. Well, that's no good. I'm just gonna peel it off like that. And I'm just gonna pre-fill it with this and it's gonna be fine. Boom, let's keep pre-filling. So remember I said earlier about those gaps between the old sheets and the new sheets? Well, here's a perfect example. That's as tight as I could get this sheet. And this one was pretty hard to get in here 
because I had to slide it behind this face frame on the cabinet and behind there, get it tight here. But I knew I could pre-fill that, so no problem. I get some on my blade, and I can already tell this is setting up a little bit. That's really all I'm doing, gang. I'm just pre-filling these large holes like this. So when I go back with my corner tape, it's gonna be perfect. Alrighty gang, the pre-filling is done in the rest of the house and it wasn't too bad. I was able to do all of it with that very first pan I made. Now I made up the second pan a little thicker and let me show you what we're up against. Now if you remember right here, there was a doorway here when we had a header. We removed all that and did all this, put a beam here so we could open this up. But check it out. I got a pretty big gap right there. And the reason for that is the way this house is framed. This room behind me, this dining room, the joists are going this way. So we got a little bit of a sag right here at mid-span. But I've got a brand new beam here, and then these joists are going this way. Very typical in a remodel though, just have the transitions between the old and the new again, the old work, the new work, the old framing, the new framing. So we're gonna fix this by pre-filling. I'm simply gonna take my six inch blade, and we're gonna fill all that in. Let me get some on there for you. You can see how thick it is. And that's all I gotta do. So let's finish all this and see how it looks after we're done. Alrighty gang, that hot mud is now dry. And so I'm gonna grab my 12 inch taping knife and I wanna show you something. Very often I use my taping knives to see how well I'm doing, to see how well and flat the joints are. So check it out. Now I've got about an eighth of an inch of a belly. We, we're really gaining on it, but let me grab my four foot level and I wanna put it against the original ceiling on this side and this side. Now check it out. Of course the level is straight, it would represent a flat ceiling, but I've got this belly here. And I'm gonna fill that with hot mud, but I'm gonna do it later. And that's a process that I call floating out. So by the time this patch is done, I'm basically gonna have joint compound all the way out to here and all the way out to here, and it's gonna be absolutely smooth. But I can't fix it yet, because the first thing I wanna do is tape and mud all these joints. So let's hop down on the ladder, get our mud ready, and show you some of our tips and tricks about how we tape and mud drywall. All right, guys, our first tip on taping and mudding is you have to remix the mud. Even though this is put together in a factory and they put it in a bucket or a box, you've got to mix it together. And it even says on the bucket, Right here, remix contents before use. So what am I gonna use? Well, I have quite an arsenal of mixers and we have learned over the years which one is better than the others. So this style right here, we tend to use this for masonry products, thin set, mortar, stuff like that. This one we use for paint and grout. I used to use this one for grout, but this edge right here, sometimes when you have it in a bucket and if that's an orange bucket or a blue bucket, that edge will scrape the bucket and you'll get those bits in your grout. Don't ask me how I know that. So this one, which is more of an egg beater style, it's just all smooth. That's the one I use for drywall compound. I've got it chucked into my big uh, DeWalt right angle drill. I've got it set on 300 RPM. It's a little overkill for this, but it's the perfect tool in my opinion. Let's take the lid off and we're gonna show you what this looks like before you mix it and what it looks like after you mix it and you're gonna see what a big difference it makes. All right, let's take the lid off of this bucket and check it out. Now I've seen people just dip in and start using it. But look at this gang. Does that look like it's ready to put on a wall? So let's throw that back in the bucket and mix this compound and we're gonna show you what a big difference it makes. All right, let's grab our knife and see how it looks. What a difference that makes. See that? That is ready to go. Now our next tip for you, I always have a clean bucket of water handy, mainly for three reasons. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this out of here, I'm gonna take it out of the drill, and I'm just gonna store this in the water, and that way this won't dry on me. I don't have to clean it right now because I'm gonna need it later. So there's no point wasting time. I'm just gonna store it in the water. The water's also good. You're gonna get in here, clean your knife, clean your hands as you go. And then if I need to thin this anyway, I've got some water right here. I can just scoop some out with my pan or whatever, put it in the mix, mix it up and I'm good to go. I typically don't add any water when I'm taping the first coat, but I will add it as I make progressive coats. And we're gonna talk about that 
later on. But I think I'm ready to tape, bud. You ready to put some in the pan, get our paper tape and get going? Let's do it. All right. That's looking great. Feels good to finally start taping and mudding. But before I finish this ceiling, let's talk about a couple of things. Number one is my paper tape dispenser. To me, it's invaluable. If this thing were loose, it's gonna end up on the floor. You're gonna get all kinds of bits of trash in your tape. It's gonna end up in your mud and it's a mess. Now, if you notice, I've got the tape coming through right here. That's so I can pull off a piece and cut it. Sometimes though, I don't use that feature and let me show you why. If I'm doing this long wall right here, I just want to walk and let the, the tape spool off by itself. So if I pull it out of there, it's going to come off very easily. I can just walk and pull and it's going to come off. But if it's feeding through here, it doesn't spool off so easily. So I kind of use it both ways. And I used to wear it on my right leg. But very recently, like last year, I figured out, you know what, it needs to be over here because I got too much stuff going on on my right side anyway. So I put it on my left leg because I'm right-handed. Another question that comes up a lot is, is there a sequence to taping? Does it matter if you do one seam in front of the other? Yes, it does. Let's walk over here behind Jordan and I'm gonna show you why. So I'm gonna put this back through here and I'm gonna take off a couple pieces of tape. One, two. Now the goal is to have as few pieces of tape that end like that as possible. You want the other piece of tape at the intersection to cover it. Now you can't always do that. Like over here at this outside corner on this patch, obviously I have a piece of tape that's the tail is loose. But as often as I can, I try to capture that tail with a piece of tape or the corner bead. So I'm gonna do the, the factory edges first where the taper is like that. Then I'm gonna come across and capture that with the piece of tape over the butt joint. The same goes true on an inside corner. I'm gonna do the, the walls and the ceiling first, and my inside corner tape is gonna go like that. Just imagine if that were all the way up at the ceiling like that. And over here where we have an outside corner, I'm gonna do all these, then put the corner bead over it, and it's gonna capture that. No big deal really, but it makes for a cleaner job, I think. And talking about corner bead, we're gonna show you our trick on how to do that later. So let's hop back up on the ladder, get this ceiling done, and then we'll start working on these walls. All right, guys, the ceiling's all done. Super excited about that. And while I was doing it, there was a couple things I was doing. I kind of do it like automatically, right? Because I've been doing drywall a long time, but I wanted to point them out to you. I don't skim coat over the tape immediately. I'm just embedding it with the knife and I'm moving on. The reason is I got two reasons. Number one, I got plenty of time to come back and put the skim coat over it. But number two, remember when I put this down like 10 minutes ago and now I'm coming back later and putting this one? This drywall compound's already drying. And in fact, if you look behind Jordan over there, it's drying really fast. We got the heat on in this house, so that's great. But I always wanna work a wet edge. If I take time to skim coat over the top of the tape, this is gonna dry even more, and I'm gonna ruin my, my joint right here, and I don't wanna do that. That's the same reason I'm not worrying about the screws right now. We're gonna come back and do those later when we have the time. If I were to take the time to do the screws while I'm right here, again, this is gonna to start to dry, and when I come back and put this tape up, I'm gonna ruin it right here. So let me head that off this ladder and I wanna show you how I hold this knife. Now, a lot of people would tend to put the knife right back in the pan when they're working on the tape. I don't, it's just habit for me. I hook it right there. I don't even need to look, right, check this out. I'll close my eyes and I can hook it. Now, when I get further in the process and I'm using a six and a 12, I hook them both. And again, it's just habit for me. I do it subconsciously without even thinking about it and it keeps my knife handles and everything nice and clean. But you know what, we did that whole ceiling and we really haven't shown you our technique. So why don't we head over to this wall right here. We'll do this 12 foot long factory edge, then we'll do a butt joint and we'll do an inside corner and an outside corner with corner bead. Let's jump in. All right, guys, I got my pan full of mud. Don't put too much, I don't want it too heavy. I'm gonna wear out my shoulder. But let's head over to this wall and do the easiest one first. And this this factory edge joint. We got the taper edge of each sheet abutting each other. If you're a DIYer, you might be tempted to come over here and start taping like this. That's gonna take you forever. It might work for you, but it's gonna take you a long time. 
And when you're on a ceiling, you gotta move. So let's wipe that off and let me show you how I do it. I'm gonna get a good amount of my knife and I'm gonna clean off each corner like that. I'm gonna start with my knife like this and I'm gonna work to my left. I like working from my right to my left when I'm doing this part. And watch what happens to the blade as I move. I'm flattening it out so that all the material comes off. I'm gonna catch that with my knife and then I'm gonna come back with another motion. Boom, I just did three or four feet ready for tape in two motions. Isn't that a lot more efficient? So let's finish this wall real quick and then we're gonna put some tape on it. Well, let's see if you can do it again. How consistent are you? All right, let me see if I can go a little longer. Let's just make sure you didn't get lucky with that one. All right, that was pretty good. See, let me show you something. If you just do that and leave this mud here, it's gonna come off. Right. So I like to clean it like that. Then it won't come off so bad. Starting at an angle, and as I go, I'm gonna flatten out my blade. That was a little more mud than I like, but I still didn't drop any. It's gonna be a little messy. And that's one of the reasons I didn't thin the mud right now. Because when it's thinner, I'd have made a much bigger mess, right? Because it's gonna fall off the knife a little more readily. Alrighty guys, let's throw some tape up on the wall. And does it matter which side of the tape goes into the mud? It absolutely does. This side right here is kind of fuzzy, and the other side is smoother. The fuzzy side goes into the tape. So I'm just gonna start right here, line it up in the middle of the joint, embed it, and I'm gonna move down. You see as I walk, it's coming off the spool right there. And it's staying nice and clean. I can embed it, embed it, cut it with my knife. Now I'll go get my pan and we'll clean that up. Now all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna come back, and clean off all the excess mud, And that's it, gang. Nice and fast. And I, think the, I think the mistake that most people make is try to put on too much mud. Then you end up sanding. Jordan and I actually do very little sanding. We're gonna go into that a little bit more later. But now that this one is done, what do you say we do a uh, butt joint? Let's do it. All right. Well, that's what we just did. Well, that's a factory edge. Oh, so butt what do you mean by butt joint? Butt joint is where the two ends of the sheet come together. There's one right under that window. Why don't we tackle it? All right, spoiler alert, taping a butt joint is the same thing as taping a factory edge like that. The difference comes later on in the taping process where you're gonna feather this one out a whole lot more than you would a tapered joint. And we're gonna show you that. But while we're right here, let me do this one real quick. And then I say, let's go tackle some inside corners, but I'm pretty close to this electrical box. I'm not worried about it. If the tape were to cover it like that, I'm just gonna tape it and I'll cut the tape off later when it dries. Just use my knife as a straight edge, cut the tape, or tear it. That's it, that's all I need to do. So now that we've shown you the ceiling and how to do a factory edge and a butt joint, let's head to the back of the house and we're gonna do an inside corner with paper tape. All right guys, in here in the master bathroom and uh, check out these lights. Don't worry about it, those are coming down. We're not leaving them. So come over here in this corner, we're gonna do an inside corner for you and have a little different knife technique. What I typically do, I'll load up one half of the blade like that. I'm gonna come over here to this side and I'm gonna apply it like that. You'll notice I did the same technique. A Little bit of an angle here and as I apply the mud, I'm flattening the blade so I have more product on the wall. Get some more on there on that side and let's come on up. Now I'm gonna do this side, now I'm on the other side of the blade. Just like that. One motion and I'm ready. And you're doing it so fast, I can barely yep. catch it. Now let's grab the ladder, hopefully I don't knock my head on that light. Get the top and we're ready for tape. Now on this one I'm gonna work down and put it on that side of the blade. There's my mud. Just like that. Over here. I want it on the right side of the blade. I'm always thinking about where I'm applying the mud and where I want it on the knife in relation to what I'm doing on the wall. Need a little bit more right here. I'm trying not to dig into the other corner as much. See what I did right there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it on purpose so you can see. See, I removed the mud, I don't wanna do that. It's just something you gotta practice with. And speaking about practicing, if you're doing this for your first time, find a closet. You know, do it behind cabinets, something like that where you won't see it. All right, I'm all ready for mud. You put this down, grab my tape. The paper tape comes pre-creased. It creases easily in one direction and you're ready to go. 
I'm going to embed it. Use my knife like this. Set it gently in the corner. And then come back to one side, clean the blade, and do the other side, and I'm done. All right, now we're at the bottom of this inside corner. I'm using my left hand, and I'll put my thumb where I want to cut the tape. That's my cut mark. I'm going to bring it over here to this wall, use my knife, tear it off, pre-crease it, and embed it in the mud. All right, that's an inside corner. Pretty quick, gang. Now let's head back in the kitchen, and we'll show you how to do an outside corner with corner beat. Alrighty gang, I like to use paper faced corner bead for a few reasons. Now it's called paper face, obviously. This is all paper, very similar to the drywall tape paper. But on the back, there's your metal that's going to give your corner some strength. Now traditional corner bead, the metal corner bead, has to be applied with a mechanical fastener, like a nail, pneumatic staple gun, or you could buy a clenching tool and clench it on like that. The beauty of this is, I just put mud on here, and I can just put it on the wall. I used to put the mud on the wall, but then I realized it's much easier to put this on a table, work on a table, bring this to your corner, and apply it. And what I could actually do, I could actually go through the whole project. I think I got 12 pieces. I could cut them all, number it one here, and one here. Two, two, three, three, put them all on a table. I could have Jordan or somebody else at that table applying the mud on the inside here. And all I have to do, my job, is to grab it, it's pre-mudded, and put it on the corner. Let's show you how easy it is. All right, guys, that's kind of it. It's a little bit messy, but that's the process. Now, when I apply it to the wall, it's going to squeeze out and make sure that this is all coated on the inside. And when it dries, it's going to be completely solid. So do the messy part outside. Set up a table on some plastic or cardboard like we did. And I'm just going to stand this up, work it around this beam. Use my hands to push it in. I'm going to wash up. And then we're going to get the knife in the pan and clean it up. Okay, can you see the mud coming out right here? It's exactly what we want. All right, check this out, gang. I'm gonna use my knife to make sure that the corner bead is where it needs to be. Let's come, down, come on down here to the corner. When I put it on here, see, this will actually move to the left and the right. I can roll it, basically. But when I first put it up, it was way over here to the right. And see that? I would have a hump here and I'd never get it out. So I'm just gonna take the corner bead, move it over to the left until the knife is touching the corner bead and I have a big valley, not a big valley, I have a little void right there that I'm gonna fill with mud. Just about like that is what I want. I'm gonna come back around and check this corner, but we're actually gonna have a piece of paneling here and a piece of J-mold there, so I'm not worried about it. But typically you go here, and here and get that void the same so that this is perfectly centered on the corner of your wall. So now what I want to do, I'm actually going to fill that. I'm going to get some mud. I'm going to apply it over the paper and pull it off with my knife. Just like that. And look how nice that looks. We're almost ready for paint. <laughs> All right, I'm going to finish this corner and then I think we're going to get out of here, dude. Cool. All right. All right, guys, before we get out of here, let's talk about all these drywall screws. We gotta fill those, right? So I've seen a couple different techniques and we're gonna show you ours. Now, whenever I'm doing drywall screws, I always carry a Phillips screwdriver with me. And why? Well, we're gonna have some ringers. What's a ringer? Before I put any mud on the wall, I'm gonna take my knife, it's clean. I'm gonna run over the screws. That sounds good. Let's check this row. Oh, did you hear that right here? Hear the blade? That screw is not set all the way. So I'm just gonna get my screwdriver. Run it in, oh, sorry, but run it in a little bit. Now I'm good. Put my screwdriver away. Now let's talk about how we put all that mud on the wall. We got hundreds, maybe thousands of screws, right? Now let's go back to when we put up this piece of tape. 
remember we had some fun and we're saying you could put it up like this six inches at a time but it's going to take you forever it's the same thing with these screws i got four screws here and i got four screws there well, actually what five here so let me do these in a way that i see done a lot one two three four five six seven eight that took a little bit of time right i mean it got the job done now check out how i was taught you're going to get some mud on your knife just like we did before a little bit like that and i'm going to use the edge of the knife not like this sideways and i'm going to go up applying pressure as i go up now look at my blade all the mud is on the wall i started at that angle like we talked about before and as i moved up i flattened the blade against the wall and all the mud is gone seems like you use that technique a lot when you're doing mudding it is we use it here and on that inside corner it's the same technique so one two and you're done i still got some mud on the blade right one okay i missed that one i'll probably catch it on the downstroke i kind of did but i'll get it and i can just keep going Look how fast that is so that's my technique on the screws i could probably do this whole wall in less than a minute it just takes practice you guys got this Woo. all right guys i'm all cleaned up we sure hope you enjoyed that video. Drywall is not the most exciting subject in the world, but it sure is important on your project. You want to make sure it's perfect as best as you can get it. And we sure hope you learned some tips and tricks from us. If you're a pro drywaller out there, let us know down below some of the things you do on your project to make it go faster and make it go better. Smash that like button for us. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on our next video. All right, guys, we're going to clean up right now. And in order to preserve this mud, I'm not just going to put the, the lid on there. That's not going to work. It's going to dry, and then it's going to get in your product and ruin your finish later. Got my clean knife. I'm going to come around the edges. And I'm going to clean the sides of the bucket. Just like that. I'm just going to throw that in my water. I've got my sponge, and now I'm going to use the sponge to clean the side of the bucket. We don't want any compound on the edges. Because like I said, it will dry. And then tomorrow when you come back, it's going to mix in your mud. And it's going to fight you all day long. All right, now that that's clean, I'm going to take some of this water. And I'm just going to pour it on top. Just to cover. That way my mud won't dry out. I'm going to put the lid on it so no debris falls in there. When I come back tomorrow, I'm going to pour that water off, remix it with my mixer, we'll be good to go. It'll keep like this for months. In Louisiana where we live, in the summertime, it will actually start to mildew. It doesn't keep forever, but it's a good trick to know on how to keep your mud uh, clean and wet and ready to use the next day.